Psalms 81, verse 8 to 16. Hear, yeah. O my people. Hear, O my people. And I will warn you. Yes. If you would but listen to me, O Israel. Yeah. You shall have no foreign god among you. Uh huh. You shall not bow down to an alien god. I you shall not have a hey, foreign you. god among you. What is a foreign god? What is a foreign god? Say it again? The government. The, the government. The government can be a foreign god, yeah? But the foreign god can also be that thing that you cherish more than God. The, the, a foreign god can be that thing that, that my pride can be God. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My name can be God. My status can be God. My comfort can be God. Anything that you, you don't want to Anything you, that takes your attention, I would rather spend my time and energy in this than to honor God, that thing becomes the God. Sometimes uh, we make our families God. Sometimes we make our friends God. Sometimes we make our own comfort God. Sometimes we make money, success God. Sometimes we want to be, we want to be looked at by neighbors and friends as a nice person so that that could become a God instead of you being real and honoring the word of God. Amen. amen. Come on, amen. amen. If I'm looking for impression, I just want everybody to look at me and say, hey, pastor is a nice gentleman. That can be a God. Because anything that takes the place of God, that takes my focus, that consumes me, anything that I'm focused on, apart from the word of God, becomes a God. Amen. amen. Come on, amen. amen. Yes. Praise God. Amen. So God is an idol. Anything else that takes your affection is God. Amen. But he said, anything else that takes, his, uh, takes your affection and occupies your mind becomes a foreign God. A foreign means it does not belong, it's not recognized. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Help me out. You shall not bow down to an alien god. Don't give your attention to or serve anything alien. Anything alien. God is saying, I want you to reach my, uh, to do so and so with so and so person. And you look at the person and say, well, I don't talk to that person. I don't, I don't quite like that person. I don't, I don't like their character. I don't like the way they do. I, I don't. You are arguing. And if you are not careful, Satan will give you in, enough reasons why you shouldn't. And instantly, the Holy Spirit is never going to struggle with you. He won't fight you. He will keep quiet. You have made a choice. Amen. Please. I am the Lord your God. Yes. Who brought you up out of Egypt. Yes. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Mm -hmm. But my people would not listen to me. Listen, excuse me now. When he says open, that, open wide your mouth, it also means... Expect me to satisfy you. Hello? Expect me to do what? To satisfy you. Expect me to don't go looking for what will satisfy you by yourself. Expect me to satisfy you. Open your mouth and I feel. Expect me. You need wisdom. Don't lean on the arm of the flesh. Expect me to give you wisdom. You need whatever you need, I can meet your need. That's what he said. Yes, ma'am. But well, my people would not listen to me. Did you hear that? My people would not listen. And uh, how some of us say that we don't praise the Lord. In our church is different. Okay? But I've met so many Christians who will say, I've, I've not heard the voice of God. I don't know how to hear the voice of God. Everybody hears God. Every human being hears God. Every human being is born with the ability to hear the voice of God. You may not hear Him like another person hears Him because He speaks in your heart. He gives you that gentle voice, that gentle idea, that gentle you know, voice, very calm voice that tells you, no, this is the right thing to do. Have you ever attempted or been tempted to tell a lie before and you heard another voice, everybody, and you heard another voice telling you, don't lie. That don't lie very gently, but you see, your pride is at stake. 
your name is at stake, and then you make a decision, this is what I'm going to do. So you have decided to silence that small voice, and you do what everybody expects you to do, so that you can maintain your status quo. That means, what have you done? Israel would not submit to me. That's right. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts mm -hmm. to follow their own devices. I like that. When we do not listen to God, what happens? God gives you up. He gives up. He's not going to fight with you. How can you fight with your own child? Is that what you want? Okay, you can have your way. Do it your way. And that is why so many of us feel like, well, you say, but when I was with God didn't tell me anything. I didn't feel anything. I didn't hear anything. So I went to do it. No, he told you before. You didn't listen. So he gave up. He's not going to keep quarreling with us and say, no, my son, you got to do it this way. And you say, no, daddy, I got to do it. That. No, my son, you got to do it. Oh, no, no. God doesn't have time for that. He doesn't do that. He will say, he will tell you gently, you know it in your heart. But when we refuse to listen, there's an enemy waiting, enemy waiting for you to open the door. And how do we open the door? We open the doors by disobedience. When you disobey that gentle voice, the enemy says, yeah, I got an opportunity. You understand what I'm saying? Because Satan, when he comes, he waits for a legal door to be opened. I call it legal. It is a legal door. And the Bible calls it the same way. It's legal. So and when Satan comes, what does he do? He brings his suitcase. Where's my suitcase? Yeah. Satan never comes to your place, your life, empty-handed. He always comes with the suitcase. And inside the suitcase is disaster, is sickness, is pain, is, is tears, is all kinds of bondages. And as soon as he comes, what does he do? He pulls the things and he scatters them all over the place so that he infests your life with junk. Cleaning up takes you time. But allowing him to come in is a very short time. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. If my people would but listen to me. I wish my people, that is God speaking, I wish my people would listen to me. If Israel would follow my way, yeah. how quickly would I subdue their enemies oh my goodness. and turn my hand against their foes? My goodness. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him. That's right. And their punishment would last forever. Forever. Hold it. He said, I, I'm longing for somebody to obey me, to listen to me. And I would have just crushed the things that are opposing you. I will crush the, the, the enemy that is trying to destroy your life. I'm so, I'm so ready. But God will not even call the name of Jesus. It won't break the devil. It won't bring God down. You know something? If you say in the name of Jesus and you do not obey the word of God, the voice of God, he doesn't listen. Time is gone, so I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop. But you see, this is one of the reasons why sometimes we Christians have some sicknesses and diseases in our lives. Sometimes we go through so many challenges in our lives. It's not just sickness or disease. It could be one problem or the other in our lives. And we pray and pray and pray and pray and fast. And God does not answer. Because that does not move by prayer. It moves by repentance and obedience. Amen. Amen. Repentance and obedience. Repentance and obedience. Repentance and obedience. When I refuse to forgive you and I'm saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, please forgive all my sin. God will say, no, you are putting the cart before the horse. In my word, I said, if you forgive your neighbor, I will forgive you too. But you refuse to forgive your neighbor and you are coming to me in the name of Jesus to forgive you. I cannot break my law. Hello? I cannot break my law. I cannot break my law. I sat down and I asked God, Lord, I need a certain amount of money to do a project. And the first thing that came to my mind was, remember somebody asked you the other day for help? And I said, yes. Have you helped the person? That was where my prayer ended. <laughs> because you cannot say you didn't hear. You 
you couldn't see. I, but I was thinking, I took the dollar and I was measuring it. I said, oh, how is it? This one, I want to measure it to make sure it covers what I want. You know what I mean? You want to use your common sense to do what you, to handle what you, and God is saying, and then I, I opened another scripture to listen, and it brought me to the same place. He says, when your neighbor asks you for something, <laughs> you cannot run away from the word of God. He said, I wish you would listen to me. When you listen to me, what am I going to do? I will come suddenly, and I will destroy everything that has been fighting against you. I will crush it. Amen. Amen. Finish it for me. Can you see? With honey from the rock. Can you see? I would have fed you with the finest of wheat, with honey from the rock. Rocks. Honey from the rock is pure. And it's hard to find. But God is, God is saying, I will give you the best of everything. The best of everything. I think I shared my testimony with you many times when I was living down in the United States. I had the best of everything. I had the best of everything. And I was living the same way the Bible says. When, when you, I listen to God, I do it. I wasn't thinking twice about it. I listen to God and I do it. He says, do it, do it. He says, go, go. I didn't have two minds. And it's very nice when you obey God. You don't have anything to worry about. If you know what I'm saying, it gives you peace of mind. When we don't obey God, that is when we try to juggle and say, how do I make this work? How do I make that work? How do I make And then it gives you headaches. It takes away sleep. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question here. And the question is also in your bulletin. Questions we must consider answering should include, why do I give an offering? Can you hear me? Please give me, a, give me your attention. Two minutes. Why do I give an offering at church? Why? Why do I give? Am I giving an offering? I'm just using basic question. Do I give an offering in church to make sure the work of God goes forward? Or am I giving an offering at church so that God will bless me back? If Jesus is Lord, then your money is his. Amen? Amen. Okay. Why do I pay my tithe? Why? Why? So many of us pay tithe because we want the windows of heaven to be open so that we can have abundance. That is not out of love. That is out of business. If you know what I'm saying? It's not of love. Why do you why do you bless your children? Do you bless them? Do you give toys to your kids so that they can grow one day you are going to get it all back? Is that your motivation? Or do you give because you love them? Mm -hmm. It's the, exactly the same way. Now, why do you serve with your gift? Or why do I serve with my gift? And how should I serve? Why do I bring others to know Jesus? And how should I do it? Why do I love my neighbor? And how should I love my neighbor? Why do I pray for others? And how should I pray? Why do I study? There are so many other why do I. Why do I say you have your bulletin? Please take a look at it. But what I'm trying to say is, Check your motive before you do anything. What is your reason for doing it? What is driving you to do it? You understand know something? You know, sometimes you say, well, because I don't want to, to cause more problems, so let me just let it go. In other words, you are sweeping things under the rug. Am I right? Praise the Lord. I want to encourage us this morning to please, in the name of Jesus, when you go home, Sit down and ask yourself, do I really love Jesus? He is my Savior, but is He the one, my director, my boss? Is He my Lord? Is He the one that governs how I relate with my spouse? Is He the one that governs how I go to work, how I work, how I go to church, how I relate with my neighbors, how I take care of my kids? Is He the one that decides is, is, my, is my love for him the motivation for everything that I do? Amen. Amen. Now, finally, there are things that you do not need to pray for for the rest of your life. If you choose to walk in obedience, you don't need to pray for quite a lot of things. Amen. amen. Come on, amen. amen. Praying doesn't make us more righteous. 
It's obedience that makes us righteous. Amen. Amen. Come on, amen. Amen. Why our prayers are so long is because our obedience is so short. <laughs> when our obedience is very long, your prayers will be short and they will all produce results. Amen. Oh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. God is saying, get straight to the point, baby. What are you saying? <laughs> and sometimes we think that making it long will convince him to overlook Archer. our shortcomings. It doesn't work. I'm saying this not to baby Christians, but to you that already know the Lord. Because you are mature in Christ. So we can take the hard pill. Obedience makes the enemy run far away from everything that is yours. Not prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, amen. 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 It's not prayer. Prayers don't drive the devil. <laughs> prayers don't deceive. Let's not deceive ourselves. Your obedience makes the devil stay out. So I want you to start to pick your Bible, please. Encourage. I'm encouraging you. You picked it up already. Dive deeper. Take advantage of the Sunday school lessons that are available. We reach out to your neighbor. Do everything that you know the Spirit of God is leading you to do. Leave the consequences for God to fix. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, amen. Amen. And the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. Come on, the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. Come on, the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. Come on, the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. As someone here that it's been long that you really, really, really had a one-on-one -on -one with God. I'm not going to mention it, but God wants you to start today. Amen. Amen. You've been very busy. You've not sat down to have one-on-one -on -one like you used to have before. Before you used to read your Bible. Try to read your Bible. Not just read it, but study it. Amen. Amen. Come on, amen. And when you do that, the first thing that God is going to do for you is that that thing you're carrying on your head, you will lift it up. And you'll be able to breathe well. Hallelujah. We lift it up from you. Amen. I'm not Amen. going to mention any names. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. And when you start to obey God, when you pray for others, it will work. Hallelujah. Amen. Your prayer will become effective Amen. as you obey God. Amen. Another person of God is speaking to me about lying. You do not want to continue to lie. Mm -hmm. Stop lying. Mm -hmm. Stop lying. You know what they call white light? You, you've heard the term white light? Do we use it in Canada too or just United States? No. There's a white light language here, okay. A white light is actually a lie. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said anybody who lies, tells lies like his father, the devil. Mm -hmm. So in other words, as soon as you start to lie, you don't belong to me, you belong to him. And he says the will of your father you will do. And he's a liar from the beginning and he's an author of lying. Praise God. Somebody had a bad dream, troubled sleep. Anybody? Yeah. I'm, I'm saying what God is telling me right now. You had a troubled sleep, bad dream. You're going to. <laughs> you, you, sir? Is it you? Oh my God. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm hearing God, so I'm saying. And what you're going to do to let that go, I'm not going to pray for you, okay? I'm not going to pray for you. The reason is, you are not a baby in Christ, you know the Lord. So this is what you are going to do. You are going to get back to the Word of God, and you are going to soak yourself in that Word of God. Everything, everything disappears. Amen. Everything disappears. Yes, the... When you soak yourself, sorry for time, but this is, this is very important. When something is rusty, it's because it's been left covered, glued for a long time, right? And then it feels like it's part of it, but it's not part of it. And how do we remove rust? We soak it in a liquid that can remove the rust. The Word of God is the liquid that you soak yourself in. Not only sleep. It's not only sleep that is the problem. The sleep is an offshoot of something else. That's what I'm hearing God. So as you soak yourself in it, that rust is going to be removed. And everything will fall into place and peace Amen. will be Amen. the end of it. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Amen. praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, Lord. 
we give you thanks, Lord. You want to stand up if you know that you want to give your heart to the Lord Jesus today, or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. I know you know about Jesus, but you want to say today, I want to really get to know Him. You can just stand up and I pray for you. Yes. Can you say after me, Jesus? Jesus, I open myself to you. I open myself to you. I welcome you. I welcome you into my life. Into my life today. Today. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Savior. I want you to be my Savior. I confess all my sin to you. I confess all my sins to you today. Today, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you die for me. I believe you die for me. According to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. I believe you rose up on the third day. I believe you rose up from the dead. Today. Today. Willingly. Willingly. I give you my heart. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I give you my life. I give you everything about me. I give you everything about me. Forgive my sin. Forgive my sins. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For forgiving me. For forgiving me. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, amen. Amen. We're gonna step up.